Russia, 1916. In the early hours of the 17th of December, a freezing winter's night, Grigory Yefimovich Rasputin was murdered. His assassins invited him to the palace of Prince Felix Yusupov, who attempted to poison him with drinks and food laced with cyanide. Perhaps suspicious of his host, Rasputin refused to eat or drink. With poison no longer an option, Yusupov and his co-conspirators shot, clubbed and stabbed the mystic priest. They then disposed of his body in the frozen waters of the Malaya Nevka River. Contrary to popular belief, Rasputin was dead before he hit the water. Yusupov and his friend Vladimir Purishkevich took full credit for Rasputin's murder. They said they killed Rasputin in order to save the Russian Romanov monarchy, who had become incredibly unpopular over the course of the First World War, largely because of the influence Rasputin had over the royal family. Yet something about Rasputin's death never rang true. Yusupov and Purishkevich told different versions of the murder, and their stories changed each time they told it. The official police investigation into the murder lasted just two days and was kept secret. Historians have since studied the police report and found its conclusions from the forensic evidence to be unconvincing at best. They've come to doubt that the men credited with killing the Mad Monk ever even committed the crime. So who did kill Rasputin? It's easy to see why Yusupov and Purishkevich had no qualms admitting to Rasputin's murder. Under Tsar Nicholas II's leadership, Russia had lost 1.5 million men fighting the Germans for little success in return. Nicholas was a reluctant and weak ruler, relying heavily on his wife, Alexandra, for support and guidance. Alexandra relied upon her close advisor, Rasputin. A controversial healer and prophet, Rasputin was notorious for his promiscuity and drinking, and rumors abounded that he was the real power behind the throne. To the rich and powerful, Rasputin was single-handedly destroying Russia. Since Prince Yusupov was a member of the royal family, and because the Russian aristocracy were glad to see Rasputin dead and buried, it is unsurprising that the grieving Romanovs did little to bring his killers to justice. It is even easier to understand why Yusupov and Purishkevich got away with it if they had never committed a crime in the first place. In 2004, Detective Richard Cullen and historian Andrew Cook studied the forensic evidence and concluded that only one wound killed Rasputin a final fatal shot to the forehead, seen in this photo. Cullen says this wound bears the hallmarks of a professional assassination. Curiously, neither Yusupov nor Purishkevich mention this close quarter execution in any of their accounts. Even more intriguingly, this fatal shot was fired from a different gun to those used by Rasputin's official killers. Specifically, the priest was killed by a non-jacketed lead bullet. Every country in the world used jacketed bullets, except for Britain, whose officers used non-jacketed lead bullets in their Webley revolvers. Cullen concludes that a third, most likely British man, took part in Rasputin's murder. But who was this third man? Prince Yusupov's diary may hold the answer. The entries for the days surrounding Rasputin's murder make several references to a man called Oswald Rayner. Rayner was an old friend of Prince Yusupov's from the University of Oxford and was working at the Russian court in 1916. Rayner was also a spy. Yusupov's diary explicitly states that Rainer knew about the plot to kill Rasputin, and Tsar Nicholas himself suspected that a young Englishman who had been a college friend of Felix Yusupov was involved in the murder. But why would a British spy assassinate Rasputin, when Britain and Russia were allies against Germany? According to Russian amateur historian Alexander Lebedev, Rasputin's influence over the royal family was threatening to pull Russia out of the First World War. Since before the war ever began, Rasputin lobbied the Tsar and his wife to avoid conflict. As the war continued and Russian casualties became more and more horrendous, Rasputin's campaign to withdraw from the war became more persuasive. According to Lebedev, the Tsar was seriously considering making peace with Germany, and Rasputin was the main motivator. Lebedev says this scared Britain. If Russia withdrew from the war, then Germany could move all its soldiers from the Eastern Front to the Western Front and overwhelm the British and French lines. So, Lebedev claims, Rasputin was killed on the orders of David Lloyd George, the British Prime Minister. The British government strongly denied any involvement in Rasputin's death, and there are no secret service documents to prove any such mission was undertaken. Before his death in 1961, Oswald Rayner destroyed all his personal files and records, leaving no clue as to his life as a spy. However, a memo sent between Rayner's Secret Service superiors in St. Petersburg offers tantalizing evidence. It reads, Our objective has clearly been achieved. 
reaction to the demise of dark forces has been well received by all, although a few awkward questions have already been asked about wider involvement. Rayner is attending to loose ends. Dark Forces was the British codename for Rasputin. If Rayner did kill Rasputin on the orders of the British Prime Minister, then he might have used his friendship with Prince Yusupov to cover up his actions and the British involvement in the killing. At any rate, it is clear that Yusupov was involved in the murder to some degree and took credit for it. Unfortunately for the Romanovs, Rasputin's death did nothing to avert dissatisfaction with the monarchy in Russia. In 1917, the Great October Socialist Revolution took place and Tsar Nicholas was deposed. He and his family were summarily executed the following summer, after Russia had withdrawn from the war. But as far as Britain was concerned, Rasputin's death did keep Russia involved in the war for another year. By the time of the revolution, the USA had entered the conflict and the Allies could match Germany's extra manpower moved from the Eastern Front. The Great War would be over in November 1918.